Welcome to the Battlefield Show. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, and as always, I'm joined by Sammy Boy. How you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Doing fantastic. Ready to talk about our favorite subject today, which is vehicle <laughs> changes in Battlefield 2042. We're going to give you the rundown on all that has been adjusted in the most recent update, as well as some of the information that we know around the next update that we'll be getting, because... They've been going on a rampage when it comes to actual communication. It's nothing or everything. Yeah, they don't have a, a middle ground, do they? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> like, just give us some steady communication, not 40 tweets a week or zero for six months. <laughs> like, come on, guys. You only have one shot. <laughs> and that's this, this is what we're in. <laughs> they have been going absolutely bonkers with the amount of communication uh basically as soon as like black friday hit i feel like that's where things really started coming through um and tons of changes have been announced it seems like everyone had a little bit of a break and then came back for it uh with some increased vigor right before the holiday season and um they are they're making some changes here so it's going to be update 6.2 uh patch notes will be coming out soon as we are recording this by the time that you listen to this they will already be out but we do have some details on uh some of the dev notes in terms of the state of vehicle gameplay in battlefield 2042 which i think it's always interesting to to see something in the dev note side of things because they don't come that frequently um, so it's always interesting to hear a little bit of their perspective, and honestly, I think this might give us some details on what could be coming in the future as well. What, yeah. are, your, what are your thoughts on on the amount of communication and what they're actually talking about? It's very interesting to see because, like, this season's felt weird in that there's not been much going on. It's like we know it's it's an extended, it's essentially a four month season, and it felt it kind of felt like when they announced that that it would end up being filled with absolutely nothing in terms of even communication. I just kind of thought they'd be uh-huh. like, all right, here's season six. We're kind of going to go away for have a bit. Have fun. And, yeah, like have fun with the game and we'll, we'll be back. But they're actually communicating fairly well. So it's interesting to see how much of it is like big changes in that. I'm not too sure. This seems like all the, all the sort of finicky stuff, which don't get me wrong, is still good and probably needed. But um, yeah, it's it's good to see that they are still communicating a lot. I just hope that they when they communicate a lot about these really tiny things and don't really talk to us about the big stuff, mm-hmm. that does annoy me a little bit just because it's like if you're going to – like this transparency and stuff is really good. Just please tell it's me like- what the hell is going on like in terms of the broader game, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's that one meme where the dude walks. I think it's from Community where he walks into the room and yeah. like, it's on fire. And yeah. He's holding a pizza and they're like, hey, guys, here you go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's a. Uh, they seem very odd with what they choose to communicate about. But I guess that's also that a lot of games like that these days. It's very. It's all um, picky and choosy with what they can and can't say for. Mm-hmm. multiple different reasons sometimes legal reasons, i do wonder if like, they even know honestly what's yeah. going to be happening um, yeah i'm curious about that too like they'd have to like they'd have to know they'd have to be working on content yeah because that doesn't just happen it's not an overnight thing to be like oh actually mm-hmm. a week before season six ends like all right let's let's do season seven like they would have had to work on that so that's the part that confuses yeah. me is at least if there is the something season, you know they're like probably they're, working on it yeah that's the part that annoys me is that it's not if they genuinely don't know for example like season eight that that they may not be working on that so they don't know yet and that's fine I'm, I'm not telling them to like give me five a five year roadmap like I don't expect that but <laughs> the next season they either there's two options they either are working on content for season seven. If so, tell me. And if they're not, well, we're definitely not getting season seven. So tell me. That's uh-huh. that's kind of my issue with it because, like, yeah, they'd be far enough into that. And unless it is the type of thing where they don't actually, they're working on content, but they don't know if it's season seven or 
the final update. You know, like it could be another Battlefield Five situation where we did get a big content drop, but it wasn't. I mean, they didn't really do seasons back then anyway, but it wasn't like a normal update. It was kind of like the big, the last big content drop. Um, yeah, maybe they're doing that. I don't, I don't know. But even then, surely by surely you'd have a rough idea. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like in companies that big, you must surely have plans. You must have concrete plans at a company that big. Mm-hmm. I, I doing YouTube and having two editors. I feel like I'm more <laughs> organized than that company. Just me, just chilling <laughs> as a part time job and paying some editors part time as well. It's as if I'm running a bigger, more well structured company than Dice. Like they should surely have the organ. I, I know <laughs> not specifics, but I know s- certain things I'll be doing in like four months from now. Surely they can. No, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's all a little bit. It's hard to wrap my head I, around. That's being said, I, I don't claim to know how that all works. Like I'm. Not- I do wonder though if this is if Dice knows or maybe the teams within Dice know, but they don't know from EA. Because if we take a if we zoom out a little bit right now, the gaming industry is just in shambles. There's tons of layoffs. There's tons tons mm-hmm. of restructuring. The bet that everyone had on live service games is paying off greatly for certain games, but now it's almost reached the saturation point. Yeah, and I I do wonder if like Dice is concerned if they do make any plans to continue supporting this game, if they'll just end up getting restructured halfway through and putting all of their efforts into whatever the next game is yeah it's it's definitely a that's probably a big part of it that i didn't think of is that it is a very odd time in the whole gaming industry that like yeah there's a lot of layoffs and from big companies too it's not like ea is immune to that it's a huge company mm-hmm. and they are, they are not immune to having to lay off a team here and there um or not even a whole team but just yeah like laying off certain amounts so maybe we're they can't dissolving a whole studio like we saw <laughs> with visceral games <laughs> yeah that was mental too because yeah immortals of avian was actually good man game uh-huh. was actually decent and then a month later they're like eh, we're done i was like what the hell that game uh-huh. i mean it mustn't have sold well i guess but like i was shocked i was like that game actually was really fun and it was well done and everything and they're just like no nope, sorry we're we are we do not exist anymore unfortunately. we're not doing that anymore yeah. <laughs> yeah so there's there's so many things that could be going on um in these notes let me pull up the exact section here because they they have like an faq section at the again at the uh here it is community hot topics q a which so many of these questions their answers feel like why did you even put them in here <laughs> um the one at the bottom is, are there vehicle changes the team would like to make in the future? No changes are locked and nothing is set in stone for the future, but there are some areas that the team would like to get to. Um, or what was the other one? Yeah, this one was interesting. Why do we have weapons coming over from Battlefield Portal, but not vehicles? Uh, a considerable amount of time. Oh, here's the answer here. A considerable amount of work is required to ensure Battlefield Portal vehicles fit within the all-out warfare roster, and the team preferred to instead focus on adding new vehicles throughout the seasons to bring you new and unique gameplay opportunities. To confirm, that means right now there are no plans to bring over vehicles from Battlefield Portal. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm not in the vehicle scene, but I don't know anybody that was asking... I think it's a fair question, but I don't know if anyone was actually asking that question. <laughs> yeah, I've only seen a few people on Twitter and that, that, like creators and stuff, talking about pretty much like a specific one they'd like to see, <clears throat> but not mm. like overall. I want all these different ones. It's more like they had a favorite from Battlefield 4 that they're like, oh man, I want to see that added. But I don't even yeah. think they meant in terms of like a portal one. I think it was more like add that, like just use that same vehicle as an actual vehicle, not a portal vehicle, if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing to sort of talk about because, like you said, that I haven't really seen anyone talking about it. It's like sometimes they make these things up as if they have been asked by the community when, like, not a single person asked that. Mm-hmm. I also, just on a side note here, because I just saw one of the questions was, um, 
How do you feel about the current gameplay of Liz versus vehicles? I just love how up in arms everyone got around Liz and vehicle gameplay. Yeah. It just makes me happy that... <laughs> yeah, I still see it daily. A lot of people I follow on Twitter, they still like... Uh-huh. I, on both sides, there's, there's this Aussie creator called Ash who is really insane. Like, I can't even... It, the dude is probably, like, one of the best players in the world. He's just absolutely mm. mental. And he's like a vehicle main. And... I have mad respect for him for how good he is, but also it's like I because I obviously get in lobbies with him and he just like destroys everyone in a little bird, and it's like good gosh. Also, please like I respect you, but please do not do that. <laughs> like <laughs> ruining my entire enjoyment of the game. Pretty much at the point where like if I get in the lobby, I'm just leaving it because the, the dude's that good. Like people and mm. he, people call him a cheater and that he's that good that people genuinely think he's cheating when he's not. And so he's been, like, making a lot of complaints about, oh, Liz is too strong. And I'm like, do you see what you do to the lobbies that you're in? Like, you literally just delete everyone. <laughs> and then you do- you'll die, like, one annoying time to a Liz character. And it's like, that is unfortunate, my man. But, like, you've died one. You've gone, like, 170 and one. I think you'll be trying to muster up some sympathy here. (laughs) Nope, it's not happening. (laughs) Yeah, like it's it's hard to again. No, it's not like on a personal level. No disrespect to the guy. It's more like please stop talking about that. You're it's you are dominating everyone. You are going. He literally posts screenshots of like 170 and like five. Good gosh. And it's like it's like he's playing against bots. Like I'm not even joking. It's the dude is that good, and I can. It's not someone I've watched on YouTube. I can say it firsthand. I've seen it in my lobbies. Like whether I'm on his team or the other team, he <laughs> dominates everyone. It's just mental. And anyway, so he goes on about you know how strong Liz is, and I'm like, you are in a chopper going 170 and whatever. Liz is not too strong for you because if Liz was too strong, you'd be going. 30 and 10, you wouldn't be doing that good, you know? Not that that's bad, but you know what I mean? You wouldn't be mm-hmm. doing 170 kills a game. So yeah, I find it really hard. And then I don't know if you know Sergeant Danger Cow. He's a yep. yeah, well-known lad in the Battlefield community. He was going on the other day about the irony of, and it's so true, the irony of the fact that vehicle players will name like a thing that kill. It's like, oh, the, like for example, Liz, it's like, <laughs> Oh, Liz is too strong. It's like that is the single thing that can kill you. Whereas as an infantry player, there's literally everything that can kill me. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. yeah. I can die to a grenade. I can die to a vehicle. I can die to a sniper. I can die to freaking getting knifed. I can die to anything. In a chopper, you're pretty much getting killed by one type of thing, which is essentially a rocket yeah. or the occasional mad outlier of someone like sniping you out of midair like that does not really happen that often you know like you can't even count that so like the vehicle players kind of tend to just lean on one thing that kills them a lot whereas for Mm -hmm. us it's like one we die to everything and then two i could just say the same about the the choppers like i keep dying to the chopper it's the same as the argument that they're making they're like, oh, I, I die to the Liz rocket all the time. Well, I keep dying to your freaking chopper. So which one needs to know? Yeah. <laughs> like it goes both <laughs> ways. So yeah. Anyway, I, we all, you and I are identical in our thoughts on the choppers. And I, I think most of the uh-huh. viewers and listeners know our stance. I don't have much sympathy for vehicle players. I, res- I, I want it to be balanced. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say like yeah. make them pointless, but I'm just saying- you're in a, a vehicle. See, Sammy's being reasonable here. Humans. I'm not. Uh, make them pointless. <laughs> I mean, look, them. I wouldn't complain if they did that. <laughs> I would be, <laughs> be down for it. Just tr- just trying to be uh, political here. But I wouldn't. Yeah. you wouldn't see me going, nah, that's wrong. They should be balanced. I'd be just like, oh, well, tough luck, man. That's how it is sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's like one thing that can do a slight bit of damage to a vehicle and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it needs to die. Yeah. Um, but the answer to the question is, um, 
Where is it? Yeah. As we've observed that Liz is currently one of the most visible anti-air gameplay elements, while also knowing that it isn't always a fun experience to be taken down by her unexpectedly. While we don't have any immediately uh, immediate changes planned for Liz in the future, we may adjust her kit to tone down those areas. Simultaneously, we'd also like to increase anti-air effectiveness for general soldier gameplay. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Which I think mates. is so, so fair, because I feel like you you can't necessarily do anything against in the air aircraft like vehicles yeah. helicopters jets you can't do that as like a general person unless yeah. you're so that's the I other think part of fair. that argument that i just said too is that there's only you have to play a certain class for example or even really a certain character in Liz. i don't think there's really any others you can run rocket launches but obviously hers is a bit more viable to really, if you want to take down a chopper, you kind of have to play as Liz. Whereas if you want to yeah. take down multiple different types of enemies, choppers can do that. They can take out tanks. They can take out regular infantry. They can take out Liz as well. So it's like Liz can only really do so much again, you know, do her thing against like vehicles. But the vehicles themselves can do their thing against whoever. So it's also another counterpoint to that. It's just like, it's just not, as unfair as I think they think it is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of their arguments I don't really understand, to be honest. Yeah, right there with you. But in terms of like the specific changes that they have done in this update, um, so this is, the actually I should say, the state of vehicle gameplay, because we don't know the changes quite yet as we're recording this. Um, but they say, at launch, Battlefield 2042's new vehicle call-in and deployment features alongside the increased map size and player counts opened up more freedom than in previous Battlefield titles. This allowed for more... This allowed for new gameplay opportunities versus the old structure many of you were used to. For the team, this also added the challenge of having to make more frequent balancing adjustments to ensure gameplay remained fun and fair. Throughout the seasons, we've continued to make frequent balance adjustments based on your feedback and gameplay behavior, as well as ensuring all vehicles fit into their specific gameplay roles, such as transport or combat. Uh, overall, the team is now happy with the status of vehicle gameplay in Season 6, but there is, of course, always room for improvement. Um, they are they are talking about, during Season 5, they fully overhauled all vehicle loadouts to ensure combat roles were once again clearly defined. Uh, the handling of ground vehicles was also a big topic in the community. Recently, with Season 6, they added improvements to steering, acceleration, and overall feel while handling them. And I did notice this. It, it did feel a lot better to, to play around with those vehicles that they have. Uh, mostly on like the smaller stuff. I, I noticed it more so. Uh, and then for the pilots out there, they also made several handling and camera adjustments to jets and helicopters to allow for much tighter gameplay opportunities. Which I haven't, I haven't hopped in the vehicles. Everyone knows my 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 viewpoints on vehicles in Battlefield, but when I did hop on them a while ago, I just could not learn how to control them in a simple or usable way. So I feel like that's going to be appreciated. Um, that it's actually better. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do seem. They've got a very high like skill curve to being able to learn them and that's i think that's for, for me that's kind of one of the reasons i never really got into them is because it's like i know how to play as a infantry it's like take, it feels like it would take a lot to learn that's kind of why i've got a lot of respect for, even though i don't like vehicle main i'm not gonna say i don't like vehicle mains but like i'm obviously not a fan of vehicles but i do respect the people who are really good with them because mm -hmm. it is it must have taken a long time to get that good so that's really the only that's where my i guess reasoning comes from because a lot of people are just permanently on one side or the other like they have no yeah they don't they're so closed-minded about it i'm probably still a bit closed-minded about it but it's like i have a bit more of an open mind on it because i do it's i'm kind of like yeah that cannot be freaking easy to be that good as a uh -huh. no a it's not <laughs> yeah P part of my um viewpoints on vehicles is just because i suck at them but it's not always been the case because in, in Battlefront, I was a like starfighter assault dude through and through. So a lot of it's just, again, I, I don't feel like the game specifically set up very well for, um, I don't know, like successful balancing as like a yeah. soldier, like an infantry. 
combat person. Like I just yeah. don't feel like it's very well suited for that. Yeah, it, it, it feels as though, to me, vehicles should be complementary and it feels like in Battlefield they're a bit more of like, they're almost the key. If you've got a really good vehicle play, you're winning that game sort of thing. And yeah. in Battlefront, as the example you just used, they were fun. They were viable, but I never was like, oh, my God, that tank player on the other team is uh-huh. just dominating the game. Like that just didn't happen, which is good. That, uh, you could you could do well. You were never going to just be a one-man army and take And you weren't going to take game. people out other than like the weird glitch when the game first came out where you could just like freaking dish, like run your uh, starfighter yeah. right into the spawn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Other than that, like at the beginning, like it's not like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I got killed by a freaking starfighter again. Mm. Like that never yeah, happened. Never in felt like that. Yeah, it was always that's the thing was it was always balanced enough, so you would die. You just kind of die a couple of times to them. It never felt like you were getting like in this game. It almost feels like you're getting targeted by the freaking vehicle, even though they're yeah. not obviously targeting you specifically. But <laughs> they it are just out feels to destroy like you. Yeah, like it feels like they. It's like it's personal it's like what the hell why do you keep killing me but they're doing it to literally uh-huh. everyone whereas in Battle, uh, battlefront it was never like that it would be just like you die a few times here and there and you, there was a bit more of a counter to it i feel in that game too like mm-hmm. it was just also i think the thing that this game really needs is even though it would need to be a very small amount in most other shooters with vehicles you can deal a lot of damage with just bullets it takes a lot of yeah. bullets but like that that's one of the counters to then how there's like if you're not an engineer class you can do zero things like there's actually not one thing you can do to a vehicle at mm-hmm. least give us like a tiny get, each bullet deals like 0.5 of a percent or something you know there's something that, yeah something that it can we can scare them off we if, if i'm playing with a squad let's just say you and i are playing and we don't we're not an engineer and there's a tank that's kind of half health and it's pushing us and we just have LMGs and we're just like, all right, let's just fire at the tank. We can make him kind of think twice because currently they would just be like, I don't care. Like, what are you, you're just shooting bullets yeah. at me. I'm just going to drive at you. But <laughs> just gonna in that instance, we're not going to kill it. them, but we're going to make them go, oh, like, this could be risky if I don't get this perfect. So they might still, they might be a good enough play that they will just be like, nah, they're not going to kill me and they'll just come in and kill us. But then fair play to them. They're good enough to do that. But a player who's maybe not as good, they'll, They'll go, oh, uh, it's probably not worth it. I'll go get some health first. Like, I'll just heal up a little bit and then then I'll come back. And at that point, we've had our chance to run away. We've had our chance to go and pick up a rocket launcher or whatever. Like, I just think I think that's my issue with it is, is that it's... And, and don't get me wrong, that's part of the class gameplay of Battlefield, and I love that too. Mm-hmm. But I think with class gameplay, you can't make it so that there is zero things you can do. Just the same way that it's not if you're not playing a medic, you can still revive your squad mates. Like that's needed. If it, imagine you couldn't revive your squad mates at all unless you're a medic. Like that would be just not fun. At least you should be able to pick up your direct squad and stuff. So I think that's how they need to balance that kind of thing is the classes are like really specialized in what they do and they're much better than, you know, if you want to take out tanks, you should be using the engineer class but it's not impossible for everyone else to do anything. Because right now, like, yeah, if you're playing Medic, there's just, you're not doing anything to a tank. You can't mm-hmm. deal any, you essentially can deal zero damage. Like, that's that's a bit unfair, I feel. Well, the, the changes with the class system too, with the specialists, it doesn't, like, originally you could select your own thing and now they've kind of restructured it a little bit more, but I don't think they restructured in a way that's very conducive to if there is a vehicle, you will die, which is accurate to real life, but also I'm playing a video game. I don't Yeah, want to, that's the thing because a lot of people will say that about what I just said about like bullets, like oh, a tank wouldn't take damage from a gun. Well, I don't care if it would in real life. It's a game, man. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not playing this for realism. If I wanted to play a real game, I'd go play like squad or something or armor, but I'm not playing that. Battlefield is a, it's a multiplayer shooter. Like it's got to have some realism for sure. Tanks are obviously stronger than infantry. So one V one, I should probably lose to a tank. Sure. But that doesn't have to be 
hyper realistic. Because if that's the case, like we just make the game a one shot kill for every gun. Like a pistol is a a pistol is as good as a an assault rifle in that instance. Because yeah, exactly. I'm just going to shoot you one time and you're dead. If I get a headshot, Bullets, you're done. Bullet. It doesn't matter what. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, the the realism argument, I never agree with it. It's just like what realism, if you can get the realism in there and it's balanced, sure, that's good. I, w- I don't want to be running around playing some super unrealistic game unless it is sold as, you know, Fortnite, for example. That's not sold as realistic, so I don't care. Battlefields may be sold as a bit more realistic, so you want that bit of realism, but like it can't come at the expense of balancing. That's this is a terrible decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I feel like it's, I, I, they're clearly in a difficult spot because the people that play Battlefield right now are definitely of the harder core fan base. Yeah. Yes, it did get a boost and yes, it's still holding a lot of that. There's still a lot more of like the harder base, harder fan base of like, yes, they're going to play the game. They're going to have tons of opinions on said game and the specific changes and the intricacies. So they're in a really good spot to gather feedback. But at the same time, like, they have the more casual fan that they need to please and have an enjoyable experience for. And then there's the the much smaller user base of the vehicles that are incredibly effective and also only play those vehicles. Yeah. And that's that's also my other issue with it too, is that it is a small portion of the play base. So it's like it does feel like sometimes they get the benefit of the doubt and they get the the changes they want because they're the very vocal minority in the community. But it's also like, why are you giving potentially like 5% of the player base such a big say in what goes on? Because that's kind of not fair for the rest of us. That's the mm-hmm. part that really annoys me about it is it's like, they're treating it like everyone plays like mains vehicles. That's not the case at all. Yeah. I, would, I would argue like, obviously I have no idea, but... I'm going to guess like 90 to 95% of people who log into Battlefield, they just choose their weapon and they spawn in as infantry. Like I don't think, and occasionally jump in a vehicle, but like I don't think it's more than, yeah, maybe 10% that would like regularly play vehicles and be super good Mm -hmm. at it and stuff. That their Battlefield experience is through the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would I would say that's probably pretty accurate. I'd say around like ten percent are the ones that are like really really heated and and care about it more than anyone else. Or like I'll hop in a vehicle every now and then, but usually it's to get to the battlefield quicker. Um, yeah, exactly. Like run over to this one spot, do the little um, the four wheeler over, go back. Yeah, there we go. Um, that's that's about like the extent of my experience, and I'd say I. Us not uh, us infantry only players are more of the standard than the yeah. vehicle players. A hundred percent. It was very similar to like in Battlefront Two. It was like most people played infantry mostly, and then you'd have the people who would main heroes or vehicles or whatever. But most people just choose like the assault class and they just jump in and have fun. And that's that's where most of the casual players are too, and that's what they need. You know, they do need to give them some focus as well because it does feel like they kind of often just listen to just the vocal minority. And obviously, Mm -hmm. I I do think hardcore players will obviously know a bit more about what they're talking about. So, of course, if you're going to listen to one side or the other, you're probably more likely to listen to the hardcore players because they know what what they're talking about. But it's, yeah, you can't just only focus on them and give them what they want and pretty much neglect everyone else. Yep, there has to be a balance for it. Yeah. But let us know your thoughts on the state of vehicles in Battlefield. What did you think about our, our hot takes here? Our <laughs> spicy thoughts around vehicles in Battlefield 2042. Let us know in the comments below or contact at uplinkpodcast.com. If you want to reach out through email, you can listen to the podcast wherever you find podcasts. Check out Sammy Boy's channels on all the things. you got a got a FPS channel. You've got a gaming channel and you've got a Star Wars channel. So check those all out. And as always, we'd like to thank Ethan Clark for the beautiful thumbnail. And we'll see you on the battlefield.